Hello my soccer universe. Well, that's the video I really didn't necessarily want to make it this way. Because if not because of what necessarily happened, but it could have been so much better uh, than what actually did happen. So yeah, I am wearing my Bayern jersey because you gotta pay credit to what they did at Leverkusen, uh, but it is not with a lot of joy from my part here. Um, let's go through the headlines. I mean, the first one is, of course, that uh, Bayern pull out the win at Leverkusen, despite not playing all that great, but they do what they do best, they get the win. Um, also, we have to say that um, Leipzig dropping points, Dortmund losing again, so um, it looks rather comfortable for Bayern. It was really a round for Bayern. On the bottom of the table, it really looks bad for Schalke and Mainz at the moment. And then when we go to Austria, Salzburg drops another game and Lask has the big opportunity to scoop up first place. Alas, they miss a last minute penalty. So yeah, that uh, is kind of what I'm talking about in this video. Let's start in the Bundesliga, where we have uh, the Friday evening game. I mean, not that I watched it, but I, I was working uh, in the room and I had it on, so I followed it. And I have to say, Union Berlin was largely the better team in that one, especially the first, first, first half. In the second half, it got a little bit more even, but then just when you thought that Dortmund, who played sloppily as always, uh, as of late, uh, might turn it around and really go forward. Avonyi uh, gets the 1-0. A little bit later, record goal, Mukoko um, scores the youngest, is the youngest goal scorer ever in the Bundesliga, gets the equalizer. And I think, yeah, that must be it now. But again, uh, they cannot defend uh, corners or any dead balls here. It's his hitter's way. Uh, and, Friedrich in the 78th gets the win that I have to say for Union was probably even deserved uh, that way. Frankfurt ends their losing streak with a 2-0 win at Augsburg, where Andre Silva, of course, plays center stage. Uh, we have to talk uh, what Gladbach and Hoffenheim uh, did because that was just... Gladbach really controlled most of that game uh, in the first half and took through a Schnindel penalty the lead. And then suddenly they turned it off. And, you know, hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. And then Kramaric gets the equalizer for Hoffenheim, which at that point was uh, well deserved. And then Thuram gets an absolute blackout where he spits, I think it was Wolf's uh, face, out of close range, sent off immediately. And this is so, I mean, I it's so un. Not that I know the player uh, that well, but I always thought that he is a very level-headed guy. Losing it that way, spitting in someone's face, I fear he will be out for a long, long, long time uh, for that one. And then with a the man down, Sessignon late gets the winner for Hoffenheim. Another big point dropped for Gladbach, one has to say. Um, Bremen and Mainz also play uh, out. Uh, you know, this was, I, I remember at the end of last season, this was almost a game that sent Bremen down, who just on the last day managed to get up. This time, uh, it was a rather a drab, even affair, and it is decided when uh, Kofeld brings on young Dinkchi, who is playing in the third, fourth, no, fourth uh, tier of German football, and he gets the winner in the last minute in a game that was not all that Great. Um, Leipzig, Köln. Leipzig has an early goal uh, disallowed and Köln does what they set out to do. Hang deep, hang deep, defend, defend, defend. We want to get a point out of this. They get a point out of this. Leipzig for the first time not win, winning at home. Another big point for Köln because after losing to Leverkusen at home, getting that point at Leipzig, that was a really, really big result. And they made no bones about it. We came here to get a nil-nil and that's exactly what they did. Uh, goalkeeper actually having quite some good saves and Leipzig just not finding the breakthrough. And yeah, it's, what can I say? And then what can I say about Schalke? Hüb Stevens, I mean, this is the one thing. Hüb Stevens, uh, again, is the, for the fourth for for time the manager. Uh, his first stint, that was the one. That was the one where they, that was probably the best Schalke 
uh, the best time Schalke had, where they almost became champions, and of course won the UEFA Cup uh, in '97. But since then, it has not worked. But he's of course a beloved uh, figure at Schalke. Schalke, yeah, defended well, but they didn't do anything offensively. I think they had one uh, timid chance in the f f first half and one in the second. Uh, yes, they then could press Bielefeld back uh, towards the last th 30 minutes because they brought all the offensive uh, personnel on, but to be honest, there was not a really a chance and Klaus gets the winner for Bielefeld and that really, really puts Schalke now in deep, 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 deep trouble. Has to be clearly said. And at the top clash between Leverkusen and Bayern. And boy, was this a tale of two halves. Um, I thought that at first Leverkusen really had a good plan to attack Bayern and took a very deserved lead after an Amiri corner kick. Uh, everyone forgets about Schick, who is standing alone, alone in the box and volleys it home in a wonderful fashion. I mean, that was the goal of uh, the round in Germany, I would have to say. And uh, it was deserved at that point because Bayern only tentative attacks and it was slowly, slowly, slowly Bayern getting a little bit back, but then they get hit on a counter attack again and Schick scores the 2-0. Or was it? No. It was fracture. You didn't even get a good look, but, but, but you could actually kind of feel it. Yeah, it was a little bit offside. And so the goal is called back. Then Kingsley Coman is a goals of injured and Leroy Sané comes on and with that actually for the la last bit of the first half Bayern a little bit found themselves back into the game and uh, could be dangerous. However, it was a c more or less a slapstick defending uh, when um, Centrally, Sané plays out the ball to Müller, who makes a cross in, and then Jonathan Tarr and Radetzky are not on the same page. Radetzky can fist it away, Tarr might have got, got, got it, there needs to be communication. They bump into each other, and behind them, who is standing there? Lewandowski, the freshly minted world footballer of the year, with an open net in front of him, and no one around him, 1-1 one, one at the half. At that time, maybe not unexpected, but I would not say that Bayern would have had deserved that equalizer then. Second half, though, is a completely different story because um, Bayern actually could take the game and was actually in many ways that the better team in the second half. Uh, there was not much coming from Leverkusen, who seemed to be content with the 1-1. I, I felt from the beginning this might be a game that will just end in a 1-1. Um, no. Bayern actually had the chances. Uh, Musiala came off on Sané, who played a little bit more than 30 minutes. He came on and came off. He was not a factor in the second half anymore. And after the game, uh, Thomas, Thomas Müller said, yes, I understand it is a little bit uh, disgrace when Sané comes off, uh, on and off, but we're not helping him either because we're playing sloppily and then he cannot play for us. I thought this was an interesting view viewpoint because Müller said, I love playing with Leroy uh, in the side because he, I really have a good understanding with him. But if we don't help and if we continue to play the sloppy, Leroy cannot shine. That was, I thought this was an interesting point. How true it is, I don't know. But the guy who came out from Monsiala almost got the winner. Uh, I think in the 83rd or something, when he hit the post. The winner though came late when everyone thought it will be a uh, 1 1. A little press, Ta again um, has the ball, wants to play it nicely. I mean, if he punts it forward, the game is over. No, he gets pressed on by Kimmich, who plays it onto level Lewandowski. The ball also takes a nice deflection, and it's 2 1 for Bayern. And you could see they were really really say, yeah, we have asserted ourselves. Now we are top of the league again and we are the class of the league. Uh, it was just, if you were hoping of Bayern dropping points, and it's late, I think this is the point. This is the point where I think Bayern goodbye. Bayern will now take over the league. Uh, this 1-1 one, one of Leverkusen, this was the big chance. Uh, because now there is a little winter break. And I think Bayern will come out strong. And then when the champs come, they will have already put a lot of distance uh, between them and the rest of the competition, especially if Leipzig and Leverkusen uh, keep dropping points, which they have not done, admittedly, too much, but still. 
So yeah, uh, for the Sunday games, um, I didn't see anything of Freiburg's 4-1 dem demolition of Hertha. Hertha really not looking good at the moment. Uh, but I saw the second half of Wolfsburg-Stuttgart, which actually allowed me to see the goal in the 49th through Brekalo, a twice deflected by Stuttgart uh, free kick from a good goal position, but it really took two wicked deflections uh, to make it 1-0. Stuttgart having two huge chances, slapstick not making those. Absolutely, but I think that Wolfsburg was overall the more mature team uh, in the second half. I would have loved the Stuttgart get out a draw out of that one, but I think Wolfsburg actually did this quite quite well, and they looked always a little bit more, more dangerous. I think Weghorst had one or two chances where I thought, yeah, he probably should have made a goal right there. So with that, we have now the uh, new standings here. Bayern on top and last week they were under 70% now they're over 80% to winning the championship. It's just Leverkusen, Leipzig, Dortmund more or less a non-factor anymore but those four are the ones that are now favored to go into the Champions League although Wolfsburg may have a little say in that. I don't think that Union, Stuttgart, Gladbach or Frankfurt or indeed Hoffenheim might have a big say there. There's a lot of movement uh, in the midfield, but as, as, as you can see, I would say um, we have the top three, then we have the next three, uh, Wolfsburg, Dortmund, Union, and then it's kind of really, really, really tight until Hertha. And then the relegation zone really starts with Köln, uh, but I think the two relegations was uh, reserved for Mainz and Schalke. Those really, really are teams in big trouble. As I said, there's now a cup round come, come coming up. I did not prepare any graphs for it, and I'm not, not sure how much I will pay attention to, to that one. So I leave, leave it for now. The German Cup I will do once we get a uh, round of 16 quarterfinals there. So let's move on. And then the Bundesliga will start, I think, right after the Christmas break again, which is the earliest it will ever start. So let's go to Austria. Um, Saturday, all kind of expected results, although uh, Rapid after the, the, the demolition of Salzburg get a 1-0 win at Admira. Sturm rather impressive with 3-0 over St. St. Burton. But I think the action again was on Sunday. With Salzburg in the last game of Schoboslai, who is now going to Leipzig, and maybe that will give Leipzig a little bit of a boost. I honestly don't think so yet. I think he will have to work hard to get into the team. Salzburg has a blackout within two minutes early in the, for, in the second half. Scherzer and Jovalic in the 50th and 52nd uh, give them a 2-0 lead. But then Berisha and Daka all, almost also very quickly, uh, within five minutes, uh, can equalize. So in the 70th, it's 2-2 uh, and Salzburg actually pressing force for the win, but they get count on the count, count, count there, where Lindel plays to Perez, who really nicely guides the ball into the corner, giving Wolfsburg a 3-2 lead. Reed also gets a very important win at Tirol, which proved them a little bit safe uh, there and stops Tirol's great streak. And then it was all about Lusk. Um, and I have to say the whole day I did not have a good feeling about that game. I thought this is a, a, a game that I did not really want to have as the last game of, of the season because everything is kind of done. You, uh, you, they never complained about it, but I feel that the players are tired, the squad has depleted many injuries. So yeah. Um, I was not looking forward to it, let's put it that way. But then when you see that with a win you can go back into first place and you are favored over Austria Vienna, although it's never that favorable uh, to go there. Yeah, I thought, let's see. Of course they dominated the game, but Austria uh, played it very, very smart, uh, keeping it tight on the back and hitting uh, on the counter-attack. And they did that well in the 13th. Uh, Tiger plays a ball to Pickler, who um, yeah gets past Matson nice, nicely, pulls, pulls it in the net. I thought that Schlager could have, the goalie could, could have done a little bit better there. But yeah, 1-0 for Austria, and I was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, just nine minutes later, Goy, Goy going with one of his famous lobs, makes it 1-1 one, one, and game on. But the game was rather even. I think that the draw was right. Second half, it's all Lusk. Lusk, Lusk, attacking, attacking, attacking. But either a little bit too sloppy or not seeing the man or taking a bad shot or there's a block or, or whatever. It The ball does not want to go in, but it was really. Austria was only hanging back. It, they were getting pushed back as much as possible. And then a last free kick given in rather good position, I have, 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 have to say. Uh, Grünwald is getting, who just came out, getting a yellow card, card for that one. The uh, ball come, come, comes in and Grünwald brings down Trauner, who probably would have connected and put the ball in. He 
gets a yellow red penalty for Lusk last minute. And I was first celebrating it, and I realized no, we penalties and Lusk. This is an uh, this is a sad, sad story, and it was to be again. Rena, who just had a little good little goals converted, steps up, and the ball is uh, the penalty is saved. Deflating, deflating. Because now, as we will see in the table with that draw, Lusk actually loses a spot. We could be first or third. If we would have lost, I think we would have even been fourth. So yeah, it was one of those games. So now third Sturm Graz really looking strong uh, at the moment. They have me a little bit worried. Not so much rapid, although it's all tied together. Look at the table. If Sturm Graz wins the game in hand, they're actually first. So, um, But that's against Wolfsburg, so that's not a gimme as well. But I would say the top four are definitely into the playoff round and it looks uh, so much. Uh, we see that Salzburg, Sturm and Lask are now uh, moving up in uh, becoming uh, champions but still very very tiny. They repeat similarly. Uh, and always have, have, have to in mind, I mean at the moment it's just getting the points and get, getting in because the points are slashed in half in this stupid system that we have. But yeah, Austria has a winter break, mid-January uh, Sturm should play against Wolfsburg, uh, so that is the makeup game, and then there's a round thereafter. Um, let's see how much will we will, will be played because winter in Austria, uh, we never played in January, and there's a good goal, goal reason for it because most of the uh, fields are not very playable. Anyway. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below what you thought about the two Bundesliga ec Bundesligas and the action happening there. Um, yeah, I realized the background is a whole lot of white because I took the one <laughs> the red shirt jersey down there. Well, uh, as I say, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.